In July of 2020, I released a video, MF Doom, your favorite rapper's favorite rapper. Two years later, on June 10th, I released a follow-up to that video. This video you're watching now is a combination of the two, with a few additional entries I've come across since around six months ago, as well as an updated version to the original entries. If you're a fan of rap or music in general, you by now heard of or have seen other people talk about the masked MC, MF Doom. From his start in KMD to his debut in 1999, Doom has garnered a cult following while still remaining largely unknown by mainstream audiences. In contrast, most every career rapper not only knows who MF Doom is, but many have mentioned him in interviews, on social media, or even in their own music. And that's because, as this user puts it, MF Doom is your favorite rapper's favorite rapper. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Till this day, the YouTube algorithm loves to sandbag certain videos of mine in search and discovery. Hitting the like button minimizes this and helps to spread the video to other fans of Doom. Let's start this video off with my favorite 2016 double XL freshman, Denzel Curry. On his most recent album, as of this video, on the track Sanjuro, Denzel mentions the three-headed King Ghidra. Which to me is quite fitting, seeing as the track name comes from a 1963 Japanese film which was distributed by Toho, the same company responsible for a majority of the Godzilla films including the film with the first appearance of King Ghidra. On a separate note, frequent collaborator Kenny Beats mentioned in a tribute tweet that during the creation of Unlocked, he and Denzel would talk about Doom every day, trying to channel just an ounce of the feeling that Doom tends to invoke. Gambino is easily one of my favorite artists of the 2010s, and while I'm not a big fan of his most recent record, I definitely have a lot of love and appreciation for his earlier projects. Off his first studio album on the track That Power, Gambino says, He had a very similar bar like this on his 2008 mixtape, Sick Boy. These references may not come as a surprise to any long-term Gambino fans. In fact, Glover once cited The Far Side and Doom as artists that he would listen to on loop during his college years. MF Doom. When I was in college, that's all I listened to freshman and sophomore year. And it was great because he had a cool voice, he was rapping about comics, but also he was doing punchline raps way before anybody was doing it. Even before Lil Wayne got a hold of it. In a now archive or possibly deleted post from 2018, Frank Ocean uploaded a photo posted up with a replica MF Doom mask. Considering Tyler and Earl's admiration for MF Doom, I think it's safe to assume that Frank was most likely a fan of, or at the very least knew of MF Doom. Maybe Odd Future's appreciation rubbed off on him, or maybe he was always a huge Doom head, I'm just speculating. It's undeniable that Peggy, aka JPEG Mafia, was heavily inspired by MF Doom. From his oddball approach to lyricism, to the mostly self-produced nature of his projects like Veteran and All My Heroes, it's really not that surprising that Peggy has referenced Doom on multiple tracks. On the song Post Verified, Peggy raps, Additionally, on the track Hop Out the I'm 21 off his collaborative EP, Peggy says, Lastly, on a Primera Sound interview, Peggy is asked about his musical influences, to which he responds, I looked up to MF Doom in particular a lot because um, his come up was kind of strange, you know? He kind of was in the industry and then he left the industry because of tragedy and then he came back almost like on, re on some revenge shit or something. I don't know. It, it's kind of like he doesn't, it's, he's like the anti hero to me. Just two weeks after uploading my follow-up video, I came across this clip of 88 Rising's Rich Brian shouting out MF Doom. Rich Brian. First, First song, song. I rapped on this, uh, this MF Doom beat and I recorded it on my iPhone and I mixed it on Sony Vegas, which is a video editing program. And the picture was a Photoshop picture of me and Tyler the Creator and I was wearing a shirt that says Earl Sweat shirt is better. I think Joey Badass might have the most tracks on this list that are wrapped over an MF Doom beat. World Domination, Amethyst Rockstar, Oh Dear, Penny Royal, a track whose name was lifted off the original Metal Fingers instrumental. It's no surprise that the track Deep Fried Friends is referenced on the outro of Hillary Swank. So I keep my circumference of deep fried friends like dumplings. Another artist who had paid tribute to the late MF Doom was one half of City Morgue, Sosmula. 
After finding out that Music's favorite supervillain had passed away, Big Sleaze posted this onto his Instagram story. Wi-Fi's funeral has an entire video on the Pitchfork YouTube channel, breaking down his favorite verses on Victor Vaughn's Fancy Clown. I'm not roping around, you better be ready and prepared to be stomped in the ground. The mystiqueness, the mysteriousness, the uh... To most fans of rap, it comes as no surprise that Earl Sweatshirt and Tyler the Creator are huge fans of MF Doom. Nardward has gifted the two multiple Doom collectibles on separate occasions, but most notably, the two geeked out when attending Doom's performance way back in 2013 during their tour in Europe. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Love him or hate him, back in 2013, Drake put out this tweet in reference to the song Accordion. The tweet sparked minor backlash from hip hop heads who found it almost impossible for a mainstream artist such as Drake to be a fan of Doom. These underground hip hop heads are getting mad because Drake quoted uh, MF Doom. A similar situation would occur four years later in 2017, when Drake took to Instagram and posted this photo of the Mad Villainy album cover, this time referencing the track Accordion in the description of the post. And just like last time, controversy spilled over on whether or not Drake was actually a fan of Doom. Additionally, over the pandemic, Drake shouted out some of his favorite hip hop artists on his Instagram story. Among them, none other than MF Doom made the list. Multiple comments under my original video on this topic were quick to inform me that Drake also rapped over the accordion instrumental during the early stages of his career. In an interview with Hip Hop DX, Nas mentions how he's been wanting to work with the villain, and how he'd like to get both Doom and J Electronica on his upcoming album. His controversial ninth studio album would eventually release featuring J Electronica as a producer on the opening track, but sadly no verse from him or Doom. Mission failed. We'll get him next time. Doom himself has also mentioned Nas in a 2012 interview a few days before the release of Key to the Cuffs, saying this, I was at Nas's pool party. That shit was dope. I even brought a present. The present in question was a painting which Doom had created, which he randomly hung up during the party. I wonder what became of that painting. This video is brought to you by My Big Cartel Shop, where you can now purchase the Villainous Ring and the new Pendant of Doom. I made this ring as an alternative for those of you who don't want to wear a crappy, mass-produced ring from Amazon or Wish.com. Take your pick, they all look alike. These rings are custom made in the Diamond District of New York City and are made from sterling silver. If you place an order, please remember to include your ring size. For more information, I created a dedicated channel in my Discord server for any questions or concerns. And if this video reaches 10,000 likes within the first two weeks of upload, I will be giving away a piece of jewelry to five random users in my Discord server. You can check out the dedicated giveaway channel in the Discord for more information. On August 6th of 2021, legendary Queens rapper Nas would team up with Hit Boy to put out King's Disease 2 a follow-up to their album of the same name from a year earlier. On the fourth track from the album, Nas features Eminem, who on the fourth verse shouts out a few fallen rappers, one of which being MF Doom. Most interesting to me, however, is that back in 1999, Eminem and Doom would play a show together while still in the initial phases of their new careers. Kanye West is an interesting case, as I've had trouble finding a source of Ye talking about the villain directly. The only connections I've managed to find have been indirect ones. Luckily though, there's quite a few to make up for it. Obviously, for one, there's this low quality photo that most of us have probably seen by now. A more controversial entry would be the music video for Assassination Day, which is a song by DJ Muggs and MF Doom. The music video depicts Kanye being assassinated. It's hard to say whether this even counts or not since Doom really recorded his verse for the song, and it could be disputed whether or not Doom had any sort of input on the music video. Personally, I find the music video itself to be really dumb. And no hate to the animator, the animation itself is very stylish and well made. I just think the music video is nothing more than cheap shock value masquerading as some sort of deep political statement. A more tenable example on the other hand actually comes from Doom himself. In his Red Bull Academy interview, Doom is asked about what producers he'd like to work with. And of course, he names none other than Kanye West. A lot of, I don't really listen to, to, the, to the current hip-hop to the point where I know who is who to say, 
oh, I want a beat from this dude, or I would like to work with this cat. I usually hear something, and then I'm like, yo, who did that? You know, it works that way. Then I'll, I'll find producers like that. But um, if I had to say anybody, I'll say, uh, my man Kanye, he's doing his thing. That's a good friend of mine, too. So I ain't get a chance to really work with him yet. So I'm like, if I had to say a producer, you know, something that people wouldn't really expect, I, I would say Con, Kanye, yeah. I know this is an odd example since it's usually the artist in question who talks about Doom, but in this case, it's the other way around. It's Doom talking about the artist. Regardless, I think it's safe to say that Kanye and Doom were friends, or at the very least, associates. Much like Doom himself, Steez is a low-key artist with a cult following, most of who I imagine know who MF Doom is. Capital Seas has had multiple of his iconic raps laid over an MF Doom production, tracks like Dead on Arrival and Chicago. The most interesting reference to me though can be found in one of my favorite Capital Steez songs. At the end of the vibrating music video, the camera turns to face Steez, as the song all caps can be heard over the raw audio of the video. Meaning Steez and his friends were just casually listening to Doom while shooting for this video. Which to me goes to show how much of a genuine fan of Doom Steez truly was. Admittedly, I knew about Cardi mentioning Doom in the past, but I never really liked Playboy Cardi and purposely chose not to include him in my initial follow-up video. But the outpour of comments that I received from many of you mentioning Cardi was pretty impressive, so I think he's earned a spot on here. On the track Stop Breathing off Whole Lot of Red, Cardi says, I just hit lit with a mess in the blue. And much like many others in this video, he paid tribute to Doom when he passed away. Kinda. At the 2019 Adult Swim Music Festival, Flying Lotus played a set with Thundercat and surprised the audience with a guest appearance from MF Doom. They performed the classic Mad Villain track Accordion. And that was until this happened. Honestly, I wouldn't even be mad. Accordion performed by Hannibal sounds like a very unique experience. Flying Lotus and Doom have also teamed up on a couple tracks, including the GTA 5 track Lunch Break. And on December 31st of 2020, the day Doom's passing was announced, Flying Lotus revealed in a tweet that he and Doom were working on an EP together. Which unfortunately, like all unreleased Doom albums, it'll probably never see the light of day. Inspiration for an artist may come in many forms. For Logic, a key inspiration to his production came in the form of Metal Fingers. On the track Perfect off his album No Pressure, Talia names Doom, among others responsible for influencing Logic's style in production. Logic cites MF Doom as key inspirations behind his production style. Oh my Shakti, aaj pehli baar tumne kaam ki baat ki hai. In March of 2009, while hanging out in the studio and recording what would later become his fourth studio album, a video was recorded of Most Def geeking out over the masked MC. I, I bet a million dollars on Doom against Lil Wayne. Oh, what up? Hero. The old rapper shut up and while you shutting up, put a shirt on, at least a button up. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> He said, out of work jerks since they shut down Chippendales, they chipping nails, doom, tipping scales. Read the signs, no feeding the baboons. <laughs> <laughs> Seems how they get your back bleeding from the stab wounds. He said, so nowadays he ain't so friendly. Actually, he wouldn't even made a worthy enemy. In this now infamous video, aside from reciting lyrics from Mm Food for almost five minutes straight, he also had this to say in regards to Mad Lib and Doom's classic, Mad Villainy. He rhymes as, as weird as I feel. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense, you know what I'm saying? Like, dude, I swear to God, when I got that, when I saw that Mad Villain record, I bought it on vinyl. I didn't even have a record player. I bought it on vinyl just to stare at the album. And I stared at it and I just kept going, I understand it. Hey, yo. After the villain's untimely passing, Complex hosted interviews asking multiple artists to speak on the late MF Doom. 
One of the artists on the list was Buffalo's West Side Gun, and he had this to say in regards to Doom. MF Doom was the only person that was on my bucket list of artists to work with, so when we did West Side Doom, it was a dream come true. His rhyming and his production were top tier, and there will never be another like him. He's the one who made me change Fly God to all caps. As he mentioned, Gun worked with Doom on a short EP titled West Side Doom. Another mention of Doom from West Side Gun comes on the outro of the track Big Al, featuring Rome Streets, where Gun pays tribute to Doom after his passing. Another artist complex interviewed in regards to Doom was 2017 XXL freshman Mine, who shared his thoughts on Doom and his legacy. Doom inspired a generation of MCs, including me and many peers. I didn't grow up on Doom, but I was just starting to really get into his discography last year, so I was hoping to run into him at a random festival or something. Music lives forever, so I'll continue listening and learning from the legend. My future kids will definitely get put on. If there was any artist I wouldn't have expected to have been a fan of or even know who MF Doom was, it'd be Lil Peep. I seem to get a lot of flack from some of you hip hop heads for enjoying Peep's music, which I think is really dumb, but whatever. The reason I mentioned Peep here is because in his interview with Montreality, he's asked who some of his favorite artists are. He mentions Pro Era and Wu Tang, right alongside our favorite masked MC. My favorite rappers, uh, definitely Future is on there, Gucci, Atlanta, man. I mean, obviously, there's a shit ton of New York, like, you know artists who got bars and shit like uh, the culture there is a lot different from Atlanta you know the rap culture and shit like I did listen to a lot of fucking like pro era when they were popping and I was like 14 15 or some shit like that and like shit like that and obviously the old shit bringing it back you know like we're saying fuck am I doom and all the old New York shit but Aside from this tweet and being featured on an Avalanche's track with Doom, Danny Brown went more in depth on his love for MF in an interview with Complex discussing his top 25 favorite albums. Mad Villainy ranked 12th, and he said this, I never knew you could make an entire album without hooks and make it sound that good. You broke the rules of songwriting, that album broke rules to me, I'm all about that. That album showed me that music has no rules. Before that, I thought you needed 16 bars and a hook to make a good song. I listened to that album and it clicked then I could listen to his old shit and get it. But by far my favorite has to be this interaction Danny and Kenny Beats had on the cave. Hey bro, stop playing the MF Doom, you scaring all the chicks, No, you bro. ain't, that, no, <laughs> I, I, my latest like the Doom. In a 2015 interview with The Breakfast Club, Action Bronson mentions how he and The Alchemist had a Doom verse ready for the remix of the song Terry. He said that on the record Terry, he said you do a remix with Pitbull. And, and I had to think, I was like, wouldn't Bronson do a remix with Pitbull? I'ma tell you who the remix is gonna be for that song. Me, Pitbull, and MF Doom. Wow. You got it done already. <laughs> I have the Doom verse. All we need is Pitbull. <laughs> <laughs> All we need is Pitbull. Cool <laughs> it's worth mentioning that we never actually received an official release featuring Doom. Five years later, however, Alchemist would take to his Instagram Live and play viewers a mix of the track Terry with the MF Doom verse that they had been holding on to for half a decade. Take eight up, under pressure like under investigation, straight up, no chaser, acts for it like the victim. First time she kissed him was the worst time she kissed him. Bet your bottom water, Washington's with a squash to den. Now he's like a hostage in the box, needing oxygen, breathing in. Came up out the swamplands, caught your fans, clap your feet, stomp your hands. Wanna die? In an interview with XXL in December of 2013, Lupe Fiasco commented on a few of his favorite rappers from Kanye West to Outkast and others. Among these artists, he mentioned Doom, saying this, The artist whom I find greatly interesting and inspiring is MF Doom. Queen's rapper Homeboy Sandman has openly praised MF Doom in multiple interviews. Yeah. The governor is breaking down imperialism, folks. Yeah. Go people. The villain could do that. He was out there having fun saying wild, outrageous things in the illest way, too. But he was breaking down imperialism and nutrition like... Do you love Doom? Yeah, super villain Doom I do love, true. You like, cause you like people who push it and take you to places that are not, let's be honest, just not totally straightforward. You know, like kicking it with Doom, you know, I won't... I feel like I had to kick it with Doom to kick it with Doom. I can't kick it with Joe and it'd be like I'm kicking it with Doom or kick it with Michael and it'd be like I'm kicking it with Doom. You mean Doom's the, his a yeah, complete yeah, original? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I also finally found someone who agrees with me on how underappreciated Key to the Cuffs is. And it's important to me to shout out, you know, uh, 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 Governor. Cats slept on the JJ Dome. Homeboy Sandman would also feature alongside ASAP Rock on an MF Doom tribute song titled Ask Anyone. On this track, the duo repped over the Datora Stramonium instrumental from Special Herbs Volume 9. That's the same instrumental that was used on Poopla Platter, as well as the song Moral Domination by Joey Badass, one of my personal favorites. Speaking of Joey Badass, fellow Pro Era member Nick Caution spoke to Complex after Doom's passing, citing all caps as his favorite song and saying this, Before at Doom, I didn't know much about that lane of hip-hop, and it just made me think out of the box with how I approach rapping at a young age. His mystique also made him larger than life and almost like a movie character. I don't know anyone in music who's been able to accomplish anything to that extent like him. One of the more controversial entries on this list has to be Freddie What City fan Gibbs. When on July of 2019, Gibbs was questioned on how he felt in regards to his collaboration with Mad Lib being compared to Mad Villainy. We should also talk about the Mad Villain album, which was, uh, have you spent time with that, Gibbs? Yeah, definitely. I tried to top that. When, like I, I used to hate when people would be like, "Oh man, yeah, this mad villain." I'm like, "Okay, man." Let me show you about. Let me tell you about this. Yeah. yeah. So every every day, my whole I'm, I'm a competitive guy, and I know Doom can't rap as good as me at all. <laughs> like, so it ain't like he can't rap like ain't, he can't rap like this fam. Like so he made a great project. That's MF Doom, bro. I don't care. He's like, an icon. I'm Kane season fam. So <laughs> don't compare. Don't, yeah, you can't Kane's really compare me to like, nobody. So it's like. <laughs> I was like, damn, man, like, I can rap better than this dude, but can I make a better album than him? You know what I'm saying? So that was my focus. It's like, no, I no, gotta no, make no, something no. as great as he made. You know what I'm saying? While it's clear to most that Gibbs and Doom were likely on good terms, that didn't stop a vocal minority of Doom fans from being outraged at what merely amounted to a competitive joke, almost oblivious to the fact that the two rappers had put out music in the past. There were a couple more incidents that occurred between these two, which I've covered in depth in my Many Beefs of MF Doom video, but this interview is about the gist of it. Aside from their 2005 collaboration on the track Old School, there are plenty of interactions between Doom and Quali. For example, in a 2009 tweet, Talib Quali posted about how he was in the studio with Kanye, Doom, and Madlib. With talks of such a legendary lineup, fans were of course excited about a potential collaboration between the four musicians. Quali would later elaborate in an email exchange with XXL, explaining that they were simply hanging out in the studio and that everyone just assumed that they were working on music, which simply wasn't the case. But can you really blame the fans? A collaboration between these four would have been absolutely memorable. On a separate occasion at a 2018 live event hosted in New York City, Talib Quali speaks on the creative genius between Lib and Doom's Mad Villainy. I'll play you guys a small portion of my favorite part. Emma Doom is like a non sequitur rapper. He's not really sticking to a subject. It's just about rhyme schemes and rhyme patterns. And as an MC, I know there's probably a lot of MCs in the building. When you, if you're a fan of Doom, you're a fan of how, how you. He, he makes you jealous. He makes you wish that you thought to rhyme Terry Cloth Kangos with very soft mangoes. And then, uh, you'd be like, how, how did I not come up with that? You know what I'm saying? And um, and 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 I talk a lot about Doom as an MC. But Madlib is no slouch either. As you can tell, the audio isn't perfect, but if you're still interested, you can check out the full video here on YouTube. Fast forward to August of 2021, Talib and Open Mike Eagle would speak briefly on the villain during an episode of The People's Party. The level of artistic appreciation Chicago raised rapper Open Mike Eagle has for MF Doom is immense. On top of the several tracks they've collaborated on, including Phantoms and Police Myself, Open Mike Eagle had this to say in regards to the villain. His flow, I have to be careful with his flow because his flow lives in my mind and like in my heart. I can almost get into his mind in terms of how he writes. New York City underground rapper Coda the Friend had some choice words in regards to Doom in his interview with Complex. He was the lyrical genius. I remember the moment my friend put me onto him, just like I remember watching a Mac Miller music video for the first time. MF Doom had a particular sound and style. He wasn't trying to be anything except him, and that was inspiring. To see someone stand out and be respected by everyone, yet he never followed any industry standards. He inspired me to strive for the same kind of legacy. He taught me to never let your vision suffer, to be something that you're not. Follow your heart. That's the number one rule. Follow your heart. Like, a lot of people might not see your vision yet. You know what I mean? People might call you crazy and think it won't make sense. Follow your heart and, and just follow it all the way through. 
When finding out about Doom's passing, like many others, he took to social media to pay tribute. Dreamville artist Ba sampled the iconic accordion instrumental on his track Black Owned Business. Additionally, he also paid homage to Doom by borrowing a lyric off rhymes like dimes on his track Pinball 2. He went on to speak about Doom in his interview with Complex, speaking on the creativity of Doom. Doom is a reminder you don't need to fit in. You can build your own legend. He was unapologetically original. One of one. Personally, I can agree more with that sentiment. Another artist I'd put on the list of did not expect to be a Doom fan would be Trippy Red. Trippy mentions Doom as one of his idols in an interview with Pigeons and Planes. I fuck with a lot of lyrical artists, like MF Doom, so I'm wearing this mask, he's one of my idols, you feel me? So I made Q's and P's, Q's and P's is a sample from MF Doom's song called Accordion. That's an accordion from MF Doom. Nobody knew that. <laughs> now you know. Feel me? MF Doom fan. And make sure when you spell that fucking name, it's all caps. And when Drake made his Instagram post shouting out MF Doom, Trippy left a comment under Drake's post. Even Trippy Red couldn't believe Drake was a fan of Doom. Here's a few bonus entries from artists who aren't MCs but are still fans of Doom. I'm sure the majority of you guys watching this video know who Kenny Beats is, or at the very least have listened to a song that he produced without necessarily knowing who he is. Kenneth Instrumentals mentions Zoom on multiple occasions. The first one that comes to mind to me is the interaction he had with Danny Brown on the cave, which I mentioned in my previous video. Hey bro, stop playing the MF Doom, you're scaring all the teeth, No, you bro. ain't that, no, <laughs> I, I, my latest like the Doom. He also talks about Doom on his Twitch stream. All I'm listening to is Doom and Quasimodo, all I'm listening to is Doom and Quasimodo. And I couldn't stop listening to Doom and Quasimodo over and over and over and over and over and over again. And then we made Unlocked. And there's probably more instances of Kenny talking about Doom, but finding all of those is like finding a needle in a haystack. So if you know any, feel free to link them below. While finishing up this video, 100 Gex put out a song titled Doritos and Fritos, a reference to the heavily memed accordion lyric. For anyone doubting that this is an MF Doom reference, they also featured this photo for the track's cover art. Legendary Roots drummer Questlove spoke to Vulture Entertainment to share his story on how Yasin Bey, aka Mos Def, turned him into a Doom fan. It started at a record release party in LA where Quest was DJing. Mos Def showed up in his chauffeur driven van, blasting music before lowering his window and saying, Yo, you gotta get in here. Quest tried to explain that he was busy DJing, but Mos Def insisted, saying, Ah, man, we gotta have a discussion. Questlove prepared himself for some sort of deep conversation, but was caught off guard when Mos Def just began preaching about MF Doom. Quest claims it was a 40 minute dialogue, it was something like a Jehovah's Witness would preach, with Mos Def saying things along the lines of, Do you understand the majestic gift that is Operation Doomsday? Which, in my opinion, totally sounds like something he'd say. Radiohead frontman Tom York expressed his adoration for Doom in an interview with Daze when asked about his favorite rapper, Doom. Ultimately, to me, it's not rapping at all, it's poetry. The way he freeforms his verses and puts it all together, I don't think anyone else quite does it like that. I don't necessarily like a lot of the beats, but he's always amazing. Governor was my single of 2012. It's genius, that tune. York has also worked with Doom in the past, providing beats to JJ Doom's Key to the Cuffs, as well as a remix of the track Gazillion Year off 2009's Born Like This. I mean, you've worked with Tom York, for example. I think you even read this morning Johnny Greenwood as well. And when finding out about Doom's unfortunate passing, York took to Twitter to pay his respects. If you're still watching at this point, I gotta commend you. You have a pretty good attendance span. You might also be the same type of person interested in my Discord server's album exchange. It's an activity where two people share an album with one another and then converse about each album after listening to them. For more information, you can check out the dedicated chat in our Discord server. If you have any questions, you can ask Rocket. He is the host of Album Exchange. Alternatively, if you'd like to hang out with me, you can follow me on Twitch where I plan to start streaming again soon. If live streams aren't really your thing, you can follow me on Twitter or on my personal Instagram. You can also check out my second channel where I mostly upload highlights of my Twitch streams. Thank you to my supporters on Patreon and here on YouTube. Tad Onchi, Caboose Cybot, Jay Murray, Bobby Nova, Jesse Pigal, Wingman, 
Dirty Dan, Don Did, Dylan Sanders, I have no idea how to pronounce your name, Conda, Christian Peterson, and a warm welcome to our latest members, Aaron Jones, Juan Jose Clavijo Alvarez, Fanboy, Edgar Hernandez, and Corazon. Thank you all for your support.